All right, thank you very much uh, for that introduction. My name is Andre de Vries. I am with Microsoft in London. Some of my social media credentials. You can find me on Twitter at Revo Andre. You can find me on GitHub using my first name. On Stack Overflow, you'll also find me using my first name, where you may have seen a few of my answers in the past. So I want to talk to you about secrets and how you keep those secrets safe and secure. So what secrets do you keep when you program? Well, here's my list of things I typically do. I connect to databases, so I need a database cred credential. I connect to Azure Cloud Services. In the past, I connected to Amazon Web Services. So I need con credentials for that. The previous speaker spoke about Moodle. And so that will be another example. If you want to store your credentials for connecting to Moodle, how do you do that in R without leaking that? And how could your secrets leak? Well, I'm sure you've seen this type of example. So what's wrong here? You have your ID of, and authentication code in clear text directly in your script. And if it's in your script, it's going to be in your history, and it's going to be in your script file. One day you're going to uh, upload that to GitHub, and somebody else will find that and log into your service. So how can you inadvertently or otherwise leak your secrets? Typical things I've seen frequently is that people send their credentials an email to me to have a look at, or they put that actually in the script file. So that's very in, uh, quite an obvious way. So some more inadvertent ways you can leak your secrets is if you use your secrets in your R session, maybe interactively, and then that interactive session is going to be stored possibly in your .R history file, or maybe in your .R data file if you don't disable history and saving data automatically. Other inadvertent ways you can do that is to actually store your credentials in initially in a private GitHub repo, and then one day you decide to publish that repo and your secrets are in the history. So, what can you do to prevent that? Well, some obvious ways would be store your uh, secrets in a text file outside of your project, so at least it doesn't get checked into version control. It's not very secure, though. You could decrypt your secrets into a file somewhere in your hard drive. That's great, I think that works, but that's difficult to share with your collaborators. And of course, I think the best way is to actually encrypt your secrets and store that directly in your project. That way you can share that with people who need, you need to work with. But the question is, how do I do that from R in a, in a very easy way? So, Let's take a, just a very brief diversion into public key cryptography and what that is. So let's imagine Bob wants to share a secret with, with Alice. To do that, Alice needs to create what's called a key pair. Now, a key pair is uh, the combination of a public key and a private key. The private key, you keep to yourself. That's why it's called private. You don't divulge that. You don't put that into a public server. No way. You keep it on your laptop where it's under the operating system control. The public key, which is the other half of this key pair, this you can share publicly with anybody because nobody can actually do much with that public key unless they have a matching private key. Now, you can do that. Uh, quite easily uh, with command line using something like SSH keygen. Or if you're a Windows user like, like I am, then you probably will want to use a tool called PuttyGen. Uh, and more about PuttyGen later. PuttyGen is just a GUI tool where you can manage your keys. So now Alice has a private and public key pair, and Bob wants to share a secret. So Alice gives Bob her public key. Bob then encrypts the message, hello, Alice, using his own private key and Alice's public key. And then this creates this hashed uh, file that you can share in the open. And Alice can only decrypt that using her private key. And if you don't have a, a, a matching private key for that secret, then this is 
very difficult, if not completely infeasible, to uh, decrypt the secret. So, just in summary, if you have, if two parties or multiple parties have matching public and private key pairs, and one party encrypts the secret with all the public keys that he wants to share that with, then anybody that has a matching public key can actually decrypt that secret. So, yeah, summary. Share your public keys in the open. Keep your private key private and encrypt and decrypt your secrets using your own private key. Now, how do you do this with R? So let me introduce you to the secret package. It's on CRAN as of, as of last month, uh, just called Secret. It's a successor to a similar project that Hadley started a number of years ago. Hadley's project was called Secure. And it uses, uh, or used a package by Shimon Rubanek, one of the R core members called uh, PKIR. This package uses the open SSL infrastructure that Jeroen Ohms wrapped around R. So basically, basically what we do, we don't actually do any of the encryption using R, but we use the OpenSSH library. So in that way, you know that you get, you get exactly what you would get using OpenSSH. We just expose a few wrappers. I have the picture on here of Gabor Tardi, whom I believe I gave a talk yesterday, but I haven't seen him at all at USR this year. So Gabor, if you're here, hello. Um, it's version one. I'm quite, quite proud to say we have 100% test coverage of this package. Now, what does it give you? You can easily create a vault. You can then easily add users that have, have access to that vault by simply adding their public keys to this vault. And then you can encrypt secrets using the combination of your private key and, and any public key in that vault. Uh, you can then share that secret, and which basically just adds the public key of anybody else to that uh, secret chain. And of course, you can decrypt the secret. So typical use cases that I have for using a package like this is I want to work on multiple machines. So I want to develop some code locally while on my laptop while I'm traveling, or I quite frequently use the data science virtual machine. And then when I'm ready for that package where, or that code when it's tested, I then want to deploy somewhere else. So I use multiple different machines and I want to share the code and share my database access keys uh, across code bases by just checking out every time using GitHub. I can also share a secret with my team. So that if I do that, I can decode the secret, or I can encrypt the secret, I can store it directly in the package vault, or the vault in, uh, vault in my code base. I can uh, then push that to GitHub. My collaborator can read that, and actually nobody else can read that. So that's, uh, I think, a very interesting use case. The third one is you can actually share a secret with either Travis or AppVeyer or possibly any of your favorite continuous integration tools. So if, if I do this, I can, and I push my package to GitHub, and I have version control with Travis set to run automatically, Travis can actually decrypt my key and run my code. So this is useful if you have a package that depends on some other API, and you want Travis to also run those tests. I think you have to be a little bit careful there because if somebody issues a pull request, Travis will build the pull request. So somebody could potentially inject some code in the pull request that asks Travis to just print the secret to the console. So be careful with this, but I think it's a very interesting use case uh, to use secrets with uh, continuous uh, integration tools. So let me give you a quick demo. This is really based on the vignette that we have with the package. And I'm going to show you really how easy this is. Now, hopefully, you can see the text there. I'm going to load the package. I'm going to load Magrito because I, I use a couple of pipes. 
then store, here's the first thing you need to know. You need to store the, by the code in uh, build it slash dot SSH. In other words, in a folder called dot SSH in your home folder. It's a question there. I have tried. I, um, it's the brightest I can do on here. I, it's a little bit easier if you're in the center of the room. Um, all right, so I have a key, as you can see, idrsa.pem, that's my public key, and please name your key that. If you're working on Linux, this will happen automatically. If you're working on Windows, then this is the, one of the things you have to remember. So the function local key reads my key. It doesn't actually show the secret of the key itself. It just shows an MD5 hash. This is a perfectly uh, safe thing to do. So you don't actually know what my key is by, by me doing that. And now Bob has shared some public keys with me. So I have keys in a, in a, in a folder, uh, and I'm going to read uh, Bob's public key. So just uh, look at that. It's bob.pub. That's his public key. Uh, and if I print that, well, this is what a typical SSH key looks like. It's an encrypted string uh, in, in plain text, uh, which again, because this is public, it doesn't matter if you know this. Every, anybody can know this and can't do anything with this un unless you ca have a matching private key. All right, now let me create a vault. The code for that is simply create vault. What that m does is to create a directory called vault, and in that directory, there's a readme, and there's a subfolder called secrets, there's a subfolder called users. This is all internal. I think it's interesting to know, but it's not essential uh, to, to do that. Now I'm changing directory into that vault, and I'm going to add uh, myself as a user. Simply add user, you give that user a name, uh, and I, I point to my local key, but that will actually publish the public key in the vault. And now you can see in my directory I have, uh, it says under the pen, but it's actually in fact the public key. I think it's a little bit confusing, a bit unfortunate, but it's the public key that's there. And now I can add Bob to my vault because Bob has shared his public key with me. And now again, you can see uh, in that directory I have users bob.pem. Uh, and again, it's, Bob, it's in fact Bob's public key. All right, now I'm ready to share that secret. That's really very easy. Let's imagine I have a secret. Now, a secret could be any R object. This will typically just be a text string, but in this case, I have uh, a list. And in this list, I have a value for some resource groups and some storage keys, and whatever. And I'm saying that I want to share the secret with myself and with Bob. So add secret. Uh, and if I now do a, a directory call, now you can see there's some more files in there. And the encrypted secret is, uh, is now stored in my vault. I can, of course, decrypt that simply by doing get secret. And get secret will use my local key as a default for decryption. So that's very easy for me to decry decrypt anything. In the unlikely case, I actually have Bob's public key which, of course, I won't, but this is demo, so I do. If I have Bob's public key, then I can decrypt that. So just to illustrate that I can decrypt that with Bob's public key, yes, I can. But Alice can't do that, because I haven't shared that with Alice yet. So I, I say, get my secret using Alice's uh, public key, and that doesn't work. So I have a question there. So the question is, can you put a big data frame? Uh, yes. What, what happens under the, under the hood is that we serial, serialize your ob object. That gives you a text string, and we encrypt that. And again, if you decrypt that, we decrypt. It gives me a string. I deserialize that, and then you have an R object back. So it should work. If it doesn't, send me a pull, requ or a pull request or an issue at, at the GitHub repo, which I'll point to in a minute. OK, so I've just seen that Alice cannot read the key or the secret because I haven't shared that with her. But that's easy to fix. I can add Alice as a user using her public key. I can then share my existing secret with her by just pointing to the username 
uh, which is Alice. And then in the hypothetical case that I had Alice's key, which I do, I can decrypt that key using her uh, private key. So that's what she would do. So really, in summary, there was a few summary functions. I can list the available secrets. This will give me a data frame with my secret and the emails I've shared that with. I can list uh, owners of, of a specific key, in this case, the, the Azure key that I uh, created earlier. So it tells me that Alice, myself, and Bob has access. Uh, I can list my users. And then I think I have a couple of more minutes, so I can show you a couple of more interesting things. First thing I think is really useful is that I can add somebody's GitHub key uh, to my vault. So let's imagine I want to share a secret with Taylor Arnold. His GitHub repo is called StatsMaths. So if I do that, uh, the package goes to GitHub, retrieves the, uh, the GitHub re uh, key for this user, and with a bit of luck, internet will actually work, and it doesn't. So you can try this at home, and let me try that again to see if internet actually responds in this room. Uh, point is that I can add a GitHub user, and I can also add uh, a Travis user. So we have a function for that called add Travis user. This will also not work right now because of, of poor internet connectivity in this room, but go and try that. All right, so really in summary, the three lines of code you need to know is create a vault, add a user, add a secret, and decrypt a secret. So we have one minute for questions. <laughs>